Welcome learners and viewers to another bright new day and we are here again with you to tell you more about advertising concepts. So in today's session, we would cover a few facts which would relate to advertising per se and which would relate to everything that we would be dealing with in this uh, entire course of things. I don't have a PowerPoint here. So now while we are discussing what we have to uh, cover in advertising, the first few things that will be a part of the session will be what is advertising? We will also discuss why do we advertise, the objectives of advertising, the difference between advertising, publicity and propaganda, the advantages of advertising and the limitations of advertising. So ideally this session has been designed primarily for all of us who are not very well aware of how advertising works, what is the basic of advertising and how do we you know, uh, proceed from learning the ABCs of advertising. So this is what the session is about. Let us begin with what is advertising. Advertising is commonly defined as a creative commercial message which is aimed at selling products and services. So ideally we've all come across advertisements. Uh, irrespective of how much we understand advertising in terms of the message that it is trying to convey and in terms of what it actually goes to mean. It is defined as a creative commercial message. It is filled with a lot of creativity. We all know that uh, there are a number of ads that we will be able to recall only because they are very creatively designed. So creative is one aspect that is a must when we talk about advertising or any such non-personal communication. It is commercial because it is aimed at selling products and services, it is aimed at propelling brands and it is aimed at, uh, you know, defining what a brand is all about. It is a paid form of communication, obviously, because uh, since it uses media and it is professionally designed communication, which is out to elaborate upon what a brand really stands for, its values and how it can benefit the society at large other than the profit making which it is involved in. So it has to be a paid form of communication. Also, it is a non-personal communication. It is about products and ideas. It is about services, about everything that sells and everything from which a company or an organization can derive some profit and everything which can benefit the society at large. And it is done by an identified sponsor. So without revealing your identity, nobody advertises. Because the very idea of advertising is that we want to make our presence felt in a market which is loaded with information, which, is, which has too much of competition and in which we have to strategize to reach out to the correct target audience. So it has to be done by an identified sponsor. It is done always through media, in this case the mass media. We all know, we've all seen various newspaper ads, TV commercials, we've heard radio jingles, we've also seen a lot of ads on our Facebook and other social media. So ideally, it makes use of media as a vehicle to propagate its message onto the audiences. Then it is done to purchase or influence behavior. It is done to purchase or influence behavior means, uh, say for example, currently uh, a person is using a health drink X and you would want the person to start using a, another health drink Y. So for that, the kind of purposive uh, communication that you design and the way the kind of media approaches it and the way it is able to create an influence will decide whether this person is going to shift his or her loyalties from brand X to brand Y. So it is basically the ideal um, situation is that it is able to influence the behavior of the audiences and it is done in a manner to induce purchase. So when we talk about media helping in rising consumerism, which is not really identified as a very positive uh, way of looking at things when we look at it from the point of view of society, though economists would think differently. But it, it is a way, it is a very potent vehicle, a very potent means, this advertising, which is able to induce purchase amongst people. 
So we know there are a plethora of things which are available in the market out of which just because we're browsing through on Amazon or on any other Flipkart or any other such website, we think that a certain thing that we've come across can be of use for us and suits our pockets, we go ahead and purchase it. So basically what is advertising doing? It is bringing across the windows of products to us. And in every window, there is a variety. So which will help you to, you know, make a purchase decision and which will attract you to make a purchase decision. So now let us try and understand why do we advertise? Though it is quite plain and clear when I told you about the, when I introduced the concept of advertising to you, but yet only to enumerate upon a few points, we advertise because there is always a need to complete the economic cycle. Which is this economic cycle? The cycle of production, distribution, consumption, reproduction, and then again the cycle continues. So in order to complete the economic cycle, why is it that in, um, you know, in this situation of corona breakdown where everybody is confined to their homes, why is it that the economic, um, you know, standards of a country have been coming down? It is because of this, because production people are not available. So when there is no production happening, there is no consumption happening or consumption is restricted because reach of brands to the customers is restricted. The economy of a country will come down. So in order to complete the economic cycle and in order that, you know, production, distribution, consumption keeps taking place in a cyclic manner, it is important that we advertise because only through advertisements do we get to know what else is available. Say, for example, you've been using, um, you know, a certain brand uh, air conditioner or refrigerator for a long time. And now when you're out to purchase a few years later, another uh, product in the same product category, you would want to know what all is on offer for you to make the right choice. So here it helps you complete the economic cycle. Advertising brings you that information. Production is incomplete without consumption. If we keep producing more than a certain quantity and it is not getting consumed, it will all be wasted. Consumption is dependent on awareness of a product in the market. How much do we consume or what is the variety available is, you know, known to us only through publicity and advertisements. The gap is filled by advertising and it helps in drawing attention. How creatively a communication is made and the way it is placed, the right timing with which it is placed in front of the audiences decides whether they are able to draw our attention or not. All times are not suitable to reach all sorts of audiences. So an advertiser or a marketer must know what is a suitable time, what is the right way of projecting a brand or service such that the person, the audience concerned will take, a, take it up positively and accept it and make a purchase decision. So it helps in drawing attention and leads further from there. Now let us look at what are the objectives of advertising. I have broken up in, uh, into general and specific objectives. When I talk about the general objectives, it is basically to inform, to persuade and to remind. When I say to inform, the information is of a new product. You're going to buy an air conditioner, you should know what all varieties are available. Is there a new entrant in the market? Has it been doing better in the market than the others? Why or why not? What is the technology like? What is the pricing like? What is the power consumption? So many different aspects that you look into. So it informs you about a new product. It also persuades you. In order to create demand for a a brand, it is important that persuasion takes place. It is not very easy for somebody to, you know, empty one's pockets on a certain brand or a product. So ideally, advertising is aimed at persuading uh, professionally and strategically so that the audience makes the right purchase decision, desired purchase decision. To remind about the brand, a number of times, a number of ads are only there because they have to reinforce a certain message onto the uh, consumers or onto the target segment. So you have to keep reminding people that you exist because there's a whole, you know, umbrella of items available. There are so many alternatives available. There are so many product category competitions going on. So ideally, you have to keep reminding that you exist and you are there for the audience and that the customer will be very happy and pleased to buy your product. So that reminding part is also a general objective of advertising. 
Coming on to the specific objectives, one, it induces trial. The trial is to encourage to try on a new product. Say for example, you would have often seen that whenever there is a new green tea in the market, you would find the sachets of those green teas sticking to the morning newspaper. Ideally, that is the best way because morning newspapers are always accompanied with a cup of tea. And what better than, you know, um, a free trial of a, of a green tea with the morning newspaper. So, ideally, it induces trial. Secondly, it intensifies the usage. It gets a new target segment to start using a product. So, say for example, this is very prevalent in case of mobiles because the competition is really hard and technology gets outdated very fast. You have new models coming in all the time. So, in order to intensify the usage, there is a certain very, you know, a push strategy which is used so that the target segment starts using the product and starts getting uh, acquainted with the product and then it should become a habit so that the audience does not leave it. Then sustaining preference is another specific objective, which is to maintain your market share. Say for example, you have built a certain kind of business volume with your product or service. You would like to maintain it in order to assure that that kind of a profit keeps coming to your organization on a routine basis. So you have to maintain the market share. This is called sustaining the preference for a brand, which can be a product or a service. Then you have to confirm the image. Image retention is, uh, is important. Say for example, uh, let us talk about Amul. Amul is seen as a brand which reflects the sensitivity and the, you know, the feeling of the nation. So every time you look at a Amul ad in a newspaper, I'm not talking about the pamphlets and all which are totally product oriented. When I talk about image, you would see that, uh, uh, you know, a little ad appearing in the newspaper and how it reflects the values that Amul stands for and the way it identifies with the sentiments of the nation. So this is the image retention. You have created an image for yourself that Amul belongs to India and it respects Indianness and then you try to retain, you know, that image in the eyes of the audiences. The next is changing habits of buying or consumption. Advertising also helps in changing habits because say for example, a new technology comes up. Ideally, we had those button phones and now we are onto smartphones and screen, touch screens and all other different technologies are there. So you have changed your habit as a consumer from using button phones to using smartphones, touch screens. So this change in habit is also induced primarily by advertising. Of course, it happens only when you start using something over a period of time. But the initial introduction, the initial usage comes to you through that primary information which advertisement gets you. Then you are also able to build a line of acceptance for the entire range of brands. When we say entire range of brands, a brand has many verticals. The same company may be making uh, television sets, could also be making ACs, could also be making washing machines and refrigerators. So each of these consumer durable is a vertical in itself. So it helps you build a line of acceptance for the entire range of brands. So this, you know, one advertisement could be exclusively focused on, say, for example, ACs, if winter are approaching or refrigerators, it can also in totality talk about the umbrella concern, the brand in itself. So that is called brand advertising. So it can be related to product, which is product advertising, it can be related to the brand and it helps you build a line of acceptance. Say, for example, Tata. We know Tata is into so many verticals. Tata is into automobiles, Tata is into salt, Tata is into so many different things. We also have consultancy TCS, Tata consultancy services. So there are so many aspects of it. And when you're able to build a line of acceptance, uh, you know, an acceptance for the brand Tata and everything else that it propagates, it's even getting into property business these days. So all of it together will build a line of acceptance and advertising which you know um, which persuades you is the best way of building this line of acceptance now to tell you in brief about advertising publicity and propaganda now these three terms are always interchangeably used 
Laymen usually use it interchangeably, but there is a slight difference and as uh, as students of advertising, as learners of communication, you should be able to identify how advertising is different from publicity, which is further different from propaganda. So the first thing is information. When we talk about information, in terms of advertising, it is totally non-personal. So the advertiser doesn't know who all are going to look at this piece of advertising. So it is a non-personal piece of communication. Publicity is more personal. It can also be non-personal at times, but it is largely personal. So you can identify which is the pocket of audience you're going to touch. Say, for example, in a, uh, you know, in a city like Delhi NCR, which is the segment of audience that you're trying to touch is something that you're well aware of. And then it is, in case of propaganda, it is mainly a form of political warfare. That is how it has traditionally been used. It is basically used to fight rumors or to create rumors per se, or sometimes even fight the strategies of the competition. So you create propaganda. It may not be true. That's about the information part. Then on the basis of transaction, when we try and trifurcate advertising, publicity and propaganda, in terms of transaction, advertising is totally commercial. It is a paid piece of information and it is aimed at bringing in greater sales, greater profits for an organization. Uh, as opposed to this, when we talk about publicity, it may or may not be commercial and propaganda is aimed at a change of beliefs and values. Say for example, religious fanaticism. So ideally, you are looking at changing the values or say, for example, the idea that we have been uh, for a long time making use of both Indian as well as foreign goods. But lately, especially after the Corona attack, people have started realizing that it is important to push your own brands forward so that you are not too dependent on foreign brands so that your economy sustains such a, a you know, huge impact of something like a pandemic. So a propaganda can be aimed at changing beliefs and values. Then the source is always known in case of advertising. It cannot be an unknown sponsor who's, uh, you know, advertising for a product or service. In case of publicity, it may not be known. And in case of propaganda, again, it is always known. You have to know who is the source. Only then, why is, what is the idea of knowing the source? Uh, if you remember in one of my previous sessions, I have spoken about what makes communication effective. And one very important aspect of effective communication is credibility. You know, uh, a student should be able to believe the teacher. Only then will he or she be able to gain the knowledge which the teacher is imparting. So the source is important and credibility increases when you know the source. And hence the source is always known. Then again, the form is, as I've discussed uh, previously, the form is always paid in case of advertising and in case of publicity, it may or may not be paid. And in case of propaganda, it is uh, less paid, we should say. It is not always paid. Now, all advertising is publicity. It is aimed at uh, segments of audiences, it is non-personal, uh, it is paid, it is commercial, but all advertising essentially is publicity. But all publicity may not be advertising. You know, you can publicize an idea. You can publicize a concept. You may not always publicize a brand of a, uh, a product or a service or some such good. All advertising may not always be propaganda also. Because propaganda, like I just said, is not essentially true. It is aimed at uh, creating a change in the values and beliefs of the people. But the authenticity is left out to be trusted. You know, uh, there is a lot of information these days on WhatsApp or has been for a long time now. The disinformation has been a huge problem, especially in the uh, in case of coronavirus and pandemic. So ideally, all advertising is not like that. If advertising is not believable, people will not respond to it. As a result, this communication failure will occur for a brand. So all advertising is not propaganda. Now let us look at the advantages of advertising. Now I'll discuss the advantages as well as the limitations or disadvantages from two aspects. One from the point of view of the brand and second from the point of view of the consumer. So let us look at the advertising advantages for the brand. One, it creates primary demand. So initial demand advertising is able to create and so it results in increased sales. 
but after the initial sales is over, continuous advertising ensures steady demand. So the first sale is possible and if the product turns out to be good, the quality turns out to be good, uh, the purchase decision will be repeated. But after the initial sales, the advertising focus is more on ensuring that the demand steadily rises. Or even if it plateaus, it plateaus at a point where it is able to draw some profit for the organization. Now, the more the demand, the more the sales. And if more the sales, the better the turnover for the company. That's easy to understand. Steady advertisement begets consumer goodwill. When you go and purchase the same brand of tea or the same brand of milk for years together or you read the same newspaper for years together, it obviously it uh, you know uh, creates a goodwill of the consumer regarding that brand. So that is uh, the advantages of advertising for a brand. Again, if the demand in market is steady, the dealers are also interested in keeping or warehousing the brand. You would rarely find that, you know, uh, a brand which is much in use, any consumer good brand, will always be available. Say, for example, Tata Salt. It's always available in most grocer's stores. But if you ask for something which is uh, less accepted or which is less used by people at large, there may be a problem with the, you know, it may or may not be available with the retailers. Then advertising also helps the sales people as maximum consumers are aware of the brand. Um, any brand that you talk of, Tata, Amul, any other, LG, anything that you, comes to your mind, if people are, have heard about the brand and they are well aware about uh, how long this brand has been or how well uh, the products have been designed or how satisfactory the experience of using these products or services have been, it will help the salespeople because then it would require less convincing on the part of the salespeople of the audiences. Once the brand is established, the consumers can sell directly without employing middlemen. So uh, middlemen, why do middlemen come into picture at all? They come into picture because this product or service or whatever you're trying to sell or advertise for has to be pushed to the target segment. But if the brand is already established, obviously people will come looking for it. They may not have to employ middlemen to tell everybody what this product is about, the initial information, how it stands a better chance of performance than, uh, you know, as compared to its competition, so on and so forth. So establishing a brand is something that uh, advertising supports in. And once the brand is established, it also helps in negating all the middlemen from the path of the manufacturing to the consumption of the product. Now let us look at the advantages of advertising for consumers. For consumers, it informs about the product availability. So we get to know that there is a new competition in the market or if there is a brand that has gotten into production of another vertical or another kind of product, we will get to know about it. Then comparison of brands is possible. You're able to compare a Godrej with an LG or so on and so forth. It increases competition. When there is more comparison, there is increased competition. And more the competition means the producer, the manufacturer will be forced to give in better quality. And also, if the middlemen are, uh, you know, subtracted from this chain, the prices may be reduced because obviously middlemen have their own share in the profit. So the prices go up for the person who is paying, the end uh, user, the consumer. Then if well informed, it also helps in saving time and making the purchase decision. Often we will see that whenever we are out to uh, purchase a consumer durable, we would always spend a lot of time researching, uh, you know, referring over to friends and people who have been using it and, you know, then making a decision which takes a lot of time. But if people are well informed, if the uh, end user, the consumer is well informed, it saves time in terms of making the purchase decision. Now let us look at the limitations of advertising. Ads ensure only initial sale. Now, if a product hasn't been designed well or the quality is not good enough, advertisement cannot guarantee sale a second time. A person can be fooled once, not every time. Then advertising can persuade. It cannot compel you to make the purchase decision. Persuasion has to be strong enough and that is the, that is the point where the task, the objective of advertising finishes up. 
it is always a one way communication. So there is no scope for feedback. Like in my initial sessions on communication, I had said that effective feedback means effective communication means you should be able to receive a feedback. But in this case, the source is not able to receive a feedback. He or she has given out certain kind of communication through certain media and that is it. You have received it as a consumer, you are not able to give a feedback. That is a limitation of this uh, form of communication. Then it is, it can be more exaggerated. We all know ads are not 100% true. There is always some bit of exaggeration involved. So they can be less believable. Peep, there can be a factor of distrust that comes from the end user. Now, what are the limitations for consumers? This is the last bit of th this session. Uh, in case of wrong purchase, you know, there can be cases of wrong purchase or unnecessary purchase or confusion. Like when you browse through the products that are available on your app, the Amazon, Amazon app, you will see that there is a plethora of products that are available. And the number of times you would just chance upon a product or a service which you would think that can be of use to you. And then you would make a purchase decision. So it wasn't a real need, but it was showed in such a way and you felt that it would be needed. It was a felt need and you gave into it. You made an unnecessary purchase. A number of times there can also be confusion about uh, the information that you need in order to make a purchase decision about a product. And there can also be a wrong purchase. Advertising costs add to product cost. Advertising, like I said, it is a very professional kind of communication. It is strategic kind of communication and obviously it incurs cost. So because the you know success or failure of this communication and the brand will be dependent upon how well researched the communication is and how well you've designed the message and whether it reaches the audiences at the right time and in the right place or not. So the cost is high. It adds to the product costs. Now advertising can be exaggerated, it can be deceptive, it can be misleading and we have had uh, rules and regulations to prevent that but yet ads we all know are not 100% believable. Consuming, consumers may not be aware of the brand monopoly since this is a costly affair advertising in various uh, for any brand in various media is a costly affair. So consumers may not be aware of the brand monopoly that exists. Now what do I mean by brand monopoly? There can be companies who are uh, you know stronger than the others, stronger in terms of the money that they can spend. Able to advertise and may not be able to find a market share or a standing in the market. So that is a limitation for consumers. And yes, it can sometimes get vulgar, it can sometimes be demeaning to certain sections of the population. A number of times, like even in media research, for a long time people have been talking about how women have been objectified in ads or the racism, the color of the skin has become important. So those are the, those are the lines that advertising shouldn't cross, but a number of times it has crossed. So this is again a limitation for consumers. I hope you've been able to understand the basic concepts of advertising well. Think creative and happy learning.